but you are not productive in outcome. Service is result oriented. There are two different things serving with your head and serving with your heart. When you are serving with your head, they ask you, have you done this? Yes, 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 I've done it, yes, yes, yes. But when you are serving with your heart, you are not serving to please any man, you are serving to please your God. I want you to tell you this. The love seed which has been planted in our heart by the Holy Ghost is ordained for profitable stewardship. Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. Say the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The love seed has been planted in you. And hear me, it is your responsibility to nurture this love seed while you are in service. You nurture it. You guide it. You make sure you protect it. Because it is this love seed that determines your outcome in serving God. It is this love seed that creates a comfortable habitat, a spiritual habitat for the manifestation of God's blessing while you are serving. You don't have a future in this kingdom if you are not serving with a heart of love. I will define it. Just wait, we are going small, small. When the love seed is nurtured, you don't serve hopeless. You serve hopeful. You serve excited. You serve with delight. Because you are sure there is a good return coming for you. So the atmosphere of love you create for yourself is what determines the products you see, is what determines your experience in stewardship. Likewise, our limits of love is what determine our exploits in service. What I mean by exploits, <laughs> you are doing things, and people are saying good outcome in your life. Good outcome, good outcome, good outcome. Your love nature is very crucial. You must be mindful of your love nature. You must be conscious of your love nature. Your love nature determines your mood in service. If you are in church, 
You are not in any service unit now. You just came home and you are frowning. Something is wrong with you. I'm sure I know what I'm saying. Have you consciously asked yourself, what is really wrong with me? That I'm in church and I'm frowning. I'm in church and I'm bitter. I'm in church, my heart is filled with hatred. What is really, have you asked yourself? Is it the Holy Ghost that is doing you? No, that's, that's first the fact. Whether you like it or not, hear this? You need a right frame of mind to experience the right kind of result. The right frame of mind. Lack of love in any man's heart can limit the acts of God in the man's life. So whatever God cannot do, just know that your lack of love is what caused it. Nobody is responsible for the seed in you because nobody has access to you. I don't have access to your heart. Scripture said no one knows the thought of a man except the man himself. Likewise, no one knows the spirit that is in man, except the spirit that is in the man. So when you are in love with God, your service becomes exciting. David said, because of my affection for the house of my God is affection. When you do things because of affection, you are not bothered who is watching you. You are excited. Our love for God triggers power, triggers wisdom, triggers secrets, triggers divine inspiration, triggers divine idea. Others will be struggling to know what to do. But because of the love of God in your you know the next step to take. You know the next thing to do. So to say in all labor there is profit. Is your own profit in you? In all labor there is profit. If your labor is not bringing you your desired profit, God is not at fault. Ask yourself, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? If serving God must be profitable, there are certain things that must be taken care of in our hearts. You cannot strive with men and flow with God. The best you can do is to strive to become the best God wants you to be. Not to strive with men. When you strive with men, hmm, the only thing you will succeed in doing is growing in bitterness. And I tell you the truth, bitterness is poisonous. Bitterness it can bitter your blood. That is your physical blood. Though. 
it will come bitter your blood. Bitterness can bitter your blood. And before you know what's happening, you will carry body odor. Because once your blood is poisoned, the next thing you'll be growing body odor. Yes, ma'am, me, I know that one. That's all. <laughs> they are in church, oh. Your face don't frown. Hear me. You are not fighting with anybody. Are you what I'm saying now? Please, hear this. Don't expect everybody to behave the way you want. You are expecting too much from people. The best you can be is yourself. The best you can be is yourself. The moment you try to behave like other people, watch out. You will no longer be a God pleaser. You are now a man pleaser. For your service to be profitable, kill strife. Because we are not here for competition. We are only here to complement one another. We are not here for competition. Your scorecard is not in my hand. I am not your rewarder. God is your rewarder. I only owe you a duty to correct you, not to kill you. Simple. And you know in church, if there is anything that I've known in my few years of serving God as a pastor in ministry, people hate correction. When you correct them, they get offended. When you correct them, they get bitter. When you correct them, this pastor is taking too much. Oh. He's taking too much of himself. <laughs> if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus said so. And him that the father loves, he chastises. If I was not corrected, I don't think I will have risen to this level. Never in this ministry. They know where they keep rebels. The reason for correction is to qualify you for profit. If you are not corrected, you cannot be profitable. You cannot be a profitable servant. They correct you, the next thing you are bent up hatred. Bah! Anytime he's around, you will see one fault in me. My run. Keep running. No matter how good Cristiano Ronaldo is, his coach can always tell him, I didn't like the move you made the other day. You will have given us a good edge over our rivals. But that mistake you made now, look at where we are. Whether you like it or not, as far as we remain in this kingdom, God will still be correcting us. If God will still be correcting us, whether you like it or not, man will still be correcting you. If you hate correction, stay far. Stay far. And staying far means stay without reward. Remain unprofitable. Only profitable people will like to be corrected. Paul said, him that the father loves, he chastises. He corrects. The essence of correction 
is to grow you into a realm of profitability. I like children. You finish flogging a baby now. The next thing, they will come and lie down under your laps. Daddy, I'm sorry. Can I go and take the biscuit now? <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Jesse and David will finish quarreling and fighting. The next thing, they will carry ball and go and start playing again. He's teaching me a lesson. But some people, you correct them one, they will keep malice with you for three weeks. Even if they were greeting you with respect before, they will draw your, your respect. You are killing yourself. Your senior is your senior. Your father is your father. No, I won't call you daddy again. Pocket it. Put it in your back pocket. That's the reason why many have not been profitable. Till tomorrow, no matter the level of rebuke Papa has given to Bishop Abiyo, he's still my father. He still calls him my father. If it were to be anointed men like you that I'm seeing now, <laughs> Dickens, Dickness, Pastor, you are anointed, I'm anointed. You are ordained, I'm ordained. You speak in tongue, I speak in tongue. <laughs> Praise God. I'm telling you what makes for profitable stewardship. Refuse the temptation of strife. Refuse the temptation of bitterness. I hope you see Pastor Mike. I don't brush your head where where. You make mistake, I give him boa. Are you hear what I'm saying now? If I keep quiet, I'm a wicked master. Because anything I don't correct him here now, he will repeat it wherever he goes. And they may use it to set trap for him. I said, no, stop, don't do that. The people that did it, see where they landed. It takes one that loves you to say, yes, don't go there. They will catch you there. But anyone that doesn't love you, allow him or let him be doing his thing. You know, you know his ear rupee. But if everyone allow you to be behaving the way you are behaving, he doesn't love you. Hear me? If you are serving and you are storing offenses, you will never be profitable. There's no pastor here. There's no dicky dickiness here. You do what I don't like. Come. Mount no before back. Come, 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 come. You must know it. If you like frown face, if I see you. I will still be looking at you. Are you still frowning the face? <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You know, it's very natural. When you are rebuked or corrected, the first thing is you begin to run. Run, no. Run, run where? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But if your head is correct, if your head is correct, no one that truly loves you we rebuke you to destroy you. No way. No way. Don't serve with offenses. It makes your service unprofitable. It makes you rewardless, not rewardful. And lastly, while you are serving, wish 
everybody well. Don't forget, profitable stewardship is rooted in love. Wish everybody well. Have goodwill for everyone, every worker. I'm not saying that you should be a fool. Wish everybody well. Let your love be rooted in wisdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Let your love be rooted in wisdom. Wish everybody well. Desire everybody to be blessed. Desire everybody to go forward. Desire everybody to experience a turn around. Desire everybody to experience a change. Now hear me. In as much as you are wishing everybody well, if any person is walking craftily around you, it's a question of time. The person will be exposed. I'm the one telling you. No one has walked craftily around me that has not been exposed. Hear me. Spiritually, naturally, something will catch you. I'm the one telling you. I pray that prayer every day. Oh Lord, anyone walking craftily around me, oh friendly friend, oh God, expose them to me quick. And the moment they are exposed, they are blasting is dangerous. Because it must go with a cause. You can't be hiding around me like a friend and you are being used like a Judas. Your punishment will be terrible. Have good will towards all men. But hear me, don't take anybody for granted. You see all these men, they are working with me. I don't take any one of them for granted. I will not know when they will be in the spirit and I will not know when they will come in the flesh. Are you hear what I'm saying now? Satan entered Judas when he was in the flesh. Through of us. But I have good will towards all of them. I have good will towards all of them. I desire to see everyone go forward. That is the mystery of success. That's the mystery of profitability. That's the mystery of lifting. If your love or your stewardship is not rooted in love, you will not truly really go far. If you are the one that they are using to set trap for others in the church or getting information that they will use in dealing with the person, you will not go far. Now, me tell you, in fact, the course of the Lord is following you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? God said, be your brother's keeper, not your, be your brother's witchcraft. Be your brother's keeper, not your brother's witchcraft. To make your service profitable, goodwill. Think of the person's rising. Don't be involved in his planning to go down. Don't be an outlet to evil information. You are killing your destiny. You are not a servant here. You are a winch here. I mean, they tell you, any person that is in this church and you are being used by the wicked to source information on how they will deal with it, you are in which here? You are not a servant here. You are sent by hell. I'm the one telling you. It's in the Bible. But you want your, your service to be profitable? <laughs> Let's read John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, read it. Stop. He will keep what? 
He will keep what? He will keep my words. Not that he will break my words. Not that he will frustrate my words. He will keep my words. Is that one a keeper of the word? He will keep my word. That, that scripture is loaded. If I focus on it now, we cannot finish it in second service. He will keep my word. So keeping his word is just like now. Your wife. You discuss something with your wife. You told her nobody must hear this. What you told her that nobody must hear. She now got one anointed friend in church. Did you hear? My husband just told me, oh, but say I should not tell you about. You know you are my best friend. I just I should tell you. <laughs> when you know that this is what has happened, will you be happy? That is how God sees us. Keep my word. What I say you should not do, don't do. What I say you should do, do. Keep my word. If you can't keep secrets, you are a tail bearer. As scripture says, a tail bearer, it must be rooted in love. Now hear me, the deeper the love, the deeper the secrets. What makes love, love is secret. Am I saying the truth? What makes love, love is secret. You can't draw someone closer that does not keep secrets. You, may, you, <laughs> you have carried the time bomb. Please, I beg you, you don't have too many years to correct errors in your life. Start doing the right thing. Walk in love. Serve in love. Let your head be correct when you are serving. Don't look for anybody's downfall. You will not fall. Seek how others will be blessed. Men, you have opened channels of blessing. If your service must be profitable, please kill offenses. Don't come to church with a heavy heart. Church is a place where people go and they become lively. Not where they go and they go with stone in their heart. No! Scripture says, Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. And the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. You don't come to church to possess depression. To possess anger. No! Check it! Satan is attacking you. Jesus said, the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I've come that you might have life. And have it more abundantly. 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 If there is anything I do to myself every day, I do what we call cross-examination. Lord, am I serving you right? Anyway, I'm not getting it. Please help me. Have mercy on me. Lord, help me. I don't want to go to hell. Oh. I don't want to go to hell. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I pray it every day. If the trumpets blow now, <laughs> will you go? Are you sure you will go? <laughs> if the trumpets blow now, will you go? Praise God. The Lord will deliver you. Amen. Whatever is making your stewardship unprofitable, today by this communion you will be healed. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. I like what one of my friends told me and I bought that philosophy. I don't have to grace to serve in vain. I don't have grace to serve where I will not be rewarded 
for what I will not be rewarded. Anything that I know will not profit me, I will, I will just, I will, I will stop it. I know it will not profit me. I don't have grace to serve and not be rewarded. I only have grace to serve and experience God's reward. God's reward. So whatever you are doing now, you have a reward. Make sure it's a good reward that will better your life and better everyone around you. Serve to be rewarded. You are not here to waste time. You are here to invest into your future. And if you must serve to be rewarded, please let your heart be rooted in love. I, the Lord, search the heart. And I examine the way to reward every man. To reward every man. To reward every man. God is our rewarder. So let's be conscious of this fact. Mind how you serve. Mind how you serve. You are keeping malice in church and you want God to reward you. I don't want him to see me. If he's coming this way, turn the other way, turn the other way. You want to be rewarded. Hear me? Open rebuke is better than secret love. I better rebuke you and you frown your face than for me to pretend that all is well. I will not do that. What is in your face that I should be afraid of? Nothing. You can only frown it. But by the time I finish talking to you, the thing will open. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Bitterness does not give you a good reward. It gives you a bad reward. Please, I beg you, from today, let your service be bringing results. You better say a good amen. amen. Let your service be bringing reward. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If anybody has offended you, walk up to him. Even the person is proud of saying, I'm sorry, walk up to him. I've forgiven you. Call him. That thing you did, don't repeat it again. I'm forgiving you. You know, there are proud people. They are, to say I'm sorry is like carrying a bag of cement with their teeth. <laughs> they can never say I'm sorry in this their life. But scripture says, pride goeth before a fall. How can they hold me, go and tell him I'm sorry? He's reducing my person now. You don't even have personality. You are even talking to a person. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Forgive the person. Let him go. I will always emphasize it. Let him go. Forgive the person. I'm forgiving you. You are forgiving the person does not mean that you and the person can be friends. It's not compulsory. Love is a commandment. Relationship is a choice. You don't know before? <laughs> Love is what? Relationship is what? Let's be friends. Not by force. It's not by force. Forgive the person. Wish the person well. If you have an opportunity for the person to be blessed, give the person the opportunity. That does not mean that you are friends. You are still expressing goodwill. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Don't seek. If you are sick, if you are looking for how someone will fall through you, I bet you you have opened nothing less than 250 traps that you yourself will fall by. May the Lord deliver you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And if you know truly you have wronged someone, be humble enough. Be humble enough. Be humble enough to say, I am sorry. If you don't have courage and boldness to stand before the person's front, send this as a text. I am sorry. If you didn't respond, send another one. 
I am sorry. In the night, send another one. I am sorry. I'm a practical pastor. I tell you the truth. You may not like my style, but God loves me. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The reason why I'm saying this is so that your mind can be free. Look, look at this. If your mind is not free, you can't pray well. Oh. Lie, lie. Scripture says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Even when you are praying in tongues, the Holy Ghost will be showing you the picture. See this person, see this person, see this person. Today, your heart will be healed. Watch out. Before this month will be over, you will recover profits that have been hanging. If you are saying amen, say better amen. The possessions you have been denied of, today they will be delivered to you. In possessing your possession, your mind plays a major role. Your mind. It is your mind that interprets your spiritual life into earthly matters. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. Look at verse 2 be not and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God did not remove our mind at new birth. It is a gift from God to enable us to actualize our redemptive benefits here on earth. But hear me? For your mind to enable you to possess your possession, you need what we call sound mind. Because after new birth, Satan does not have access to your spirit, but he has access to your mind. That's why he keeps manipulating your mind. He keeps manipulating your mind. The God of this age has blinded the minds of many. There are some people whose minds have been blinded from knowing the truth, from seeing the truth, from focusing on the truth, on reasoning on the truth. No wonder. He said to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So if you fail in your mind, you will fail in destiny. You will fail in life. Proverbs 4.23 He says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. The moment your mind begins to fail, <laughs> your life begins to fail. How does the mind help us in possessing our possession? Number one is imagination. I only take one in this service because of time. God relates to us according to how we can imagine. Ephesians 3 verse 20 Now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God answers us by the way we see and what we say what we say, what we see. So it is what we say and what we see that determines our absolute possession. 
what you see you say what you see you say jeremiah what's yes thou he said i see the rod of an almond tree he said thou has well seen he said i will hasten my word to perform it i remember one of the things he was teaching them yesterday he said he said visualize yourself on the price giving day you are the one the best student in mathematics they call your name the best student in physics they call your name he said you have already visualized it when that picture registers in your subconscious you now begin to work it out what's yes now god cannot help you beyond what you see god cannot intervene in your matter beyond what you see now how people see you is their problem but how you see yourself is your real problem how you see me is your problem but how i see myself is my real problem my real problem because scripture say as a man thinketh in his heart not as people think about him as a man thinketh in his heart how you see me is your problem oh? and you will live with that problem but how i see myself is a big problem Do you know what? Ten spies were sent to spy the land of Canaan. Eight came back. We see ourselves small in our own eyes. Not in their eyes, oh. Please, studio, put that scripture. I think it should be in Numbers chapter. Is it 12 or 11? 13? Please check. We see ourselves small. We see ourselves small. Let me get it. Numbers 13. Verse 32. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we had gone to search it is a land that eating up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature and they and there we saw the giants the sons of Anak which came which come of the giants and we were in our own sight put your name there I repeat, how you see me is your problem. How I see myself is the real problem. Look at it here. We see ourselves small in our own eyes like grasshopper. Can you now see why some people cannot go far? If you must possess your possession, the first thing you must do to yourself is to kill fear. You kill fear! Fear attracts Satan. Faith attracts God. We see ourselves. Some are seeing themselves that they will not graduate. Some are seeing themselves that they will make pass. Some are seeing themselves the way the, the way this year is going here. I'm not I'm not sure that uh, this marriage thing will take place. You're already seeing yourself. We see ourselves. How are you seeing yourself? It's not what with word of mouth. I'm going to show you something now. 
Every day, you paint a picture of yourself. Every day, I'm going far. Man, I'm truly going far. <laughs> I, won't, I won't be able to say this one. So your mind plays a major role in any possession you are going to take. God cannot give you what you have not yet seen. No wonder I told Abraham, look up to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west, as far as your eyes can see. In the natural, everyone has the gift of imagination. Everyone. Everyone can imagine. God said this, they have begun to imagine and nothing shall be restrained from them. Even children, they learn by what they see. Yes, they learn by what they see. They learn by what they see. They learn faster through stories. They learn through pictures. Everyone has unlimited abundance in his future. Everyone has unlimited money. Everyone has unlimited opportunity. Everyone has unlimited breakthrough. Everyone has unlimited success. But do you know what? You have to start imagining it. When you begin to imagine it, you begin to realize it. Scripture said the lines are falling for me in pleasant places. The things that are falling for you in pleasant places, they are the things you have been imagining and you are beginning to realize them step by step. Step by step. I am not responsible for what you realize because I don't know what you have been imagining. I am not responsible for what you possess. You are responsible for what you possess because you are responsible for what you imagine. If you say it is impossible, it will register. If you say it is possible, it will register. So your imagination sets the pace for your possession. God told Abraham, look up at the star. If you can count them, your children will be too plenty. Many are still looking at what is happening around them. Man, I don't understand this laugh here again. The way my body they do me now, I be like, say, man, move go Abuja. When you go to Abuja, you will still behave with the same mentality. Lafia is not your problem. Your problem is your mind. Start looking away from the shame, disappointment, the setback. Start reaching out to the things that you want to come to pass. Are you hear what I'm saying now? Our mind operates like a divine magnet. It has power to attract. It can attract good, it can attract bad, depending on the one you want. It can attract open door. It can attract a change of story, depending on what you want. No one has access to your mind. You only has access to your mind so you can attract whatever you want. Look beyond the things that are happening now. See it as a concluded matter. Scripture says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. Why? He's seen himself already returning in glory. So your failures, your shortcomings, see them as a temporary thing. It's not forever. You're changing level. I say you're changing level. I say you're changing level. I, the Lord, will do nothing without your mind. Philemon, verse 14. I, the Lord, will do nothing without your mind. Now, do you know what? If you tell yourself that before the end of this year, I will build a house, watch out. God will now begin to arrange opportunity. I must build a house before the end of this year. 
I must build a house before there. God will now begin to arrange opportunity. Before you know what is happening, opportunity will come. You will buy land. I must build a house before the end of this year. I must build a house before the end. Before you know what is happening, the money to start the building. God operates with your mind. You can't possess in life what your mind have not pictured. You can't possess in life what your mind have not pictured. Praise God. Don't picture the wrong thing, no. Don't come and stay in church and be eyeing somebody's husband. Pastor say you can't picture him. You can't possess in life what you have not pictured. God will not confirm that one. You are a winch. I don't even know why I said it. I think the Holy Ghost wants to deliver somebody. Maybe somebody is eyeing somebody's husband. You can't possess what you have not pictured. Okay, I don't picture this one. <laughs> the Lord deliver you. I say the Lord deliver you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever look like a manipulation to what you want to possess. You have found it in scripture. There is provision for it under God. And forces are fighting it today. The blood will swallow it. Rise up to your feet wherever you are right now. Lord, whatever is blocking my possession. Of the things you have paid for for me on the cross. By the blood of Jesus, I possess my possession. I possess my breakthrough. I possess my marriage. I possess my change of level. Lift up your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. I possess. The things that have been appointed for me, I possess. My turnaround, I possess. My new dumb blessings, I possess. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. Declare what you want to see now. possess my breakthrough my change of level my turnaround my increase my profits my good reward lift up your voice declare you must possess them in jesus name we have prayed all eyes closed all heads bow you are here you are not born again the first possession you need is to possess your salvation, your redemption. Jesus has already paid for your own. He has been waiting for you to collect it. You want to make it right with Jesus wherever you are right now? Put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me. With your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus name I pray. If you pray that prayer with me. Wherever you are. Come quickly. I want to pray with you. Before we partake of the communion. Put your hands together for Jesus. If you are coming. Don't need to be ashamed. God bless you. God bless you. Take that step right now. God bless you. Come quickly. Put your hands together for the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. That's the best decision anyone can make. Please help me bring that person. Come this way, come this way. Come this way. Come this way. God bless you. Come, come, come. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please come, God bless you. Come unto you, shall you in no wise cast out. They've accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. I decree by this oil 
every legal hold the enemy had over any one of you the yoke is broken now you take your liberty from here in the name of jesus christ him that the son set free is free indeed in the name of jesus christ whatever legal yoke the enemy had over you the yoke is broken the yoke is broken that torment is over that depression is over that torment is over in the name of jesus christ put your hands together for jesus for them turn and follow this man now turn god bless you as you partake of this communion is this not the cup of blessing which the lord has blessed i don't know what you want this communion will give you your portion you will take whatever you want in this communion you will take your breakthrough in this communion you will take your wedding gown in this communion you will take your success in this communion you will take your change of level in this communion say amen like a believer any power withholding what you are due for by the blood they will surrender this morning so shall it be in jesus mighty name we pray father we